Uh, can you hear us? Yes, yes. Okay. Cool. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, can you uh, say something to check if you're... Uh, ah, if so you're... Can you hear me? Okay, good, thanks. Um, okay, so we'll begin uh, the session with uh, Tadashi, who will tell us about wedge holography and flat space and celestial holography. Okay, so first I'd like to thank organizers for kind uh, arrangement of this online talk. I apologize, I apologize that I cannot come uh, physically because of my university duties and some uh, preparation for some other workshops. And so here I'd like to talk about wedge holography in flat space and celestial holography. And in this uh, celestial holography workshop, so I'm very happy to be uh, give a talk here. And this work is based on the, our recent work uh, based on the, our graduate student, Naoki Ogawa and Takashi Tsuda and Takahiro Waki in YITP, our institute. Okay, so let me start with an uh, introduction. So there are lots of uh, exciting developments of this celestial holography, and which is, gives a holography in Laurentian flat space time, and that's, I think, main topic of this uh, workshop. And uh, so owing to the great works by many people, and uh, Starting from this, uh, I mean, Ari Waku, Jan Duvor, and uh, Slodoki, and He Mitra, and Strominja, and Pasteleski, Pasteleski, Shao, Strominja has a very great, uh, very beautiful framework which connects this gravity and to uh, uh, scattering amplitude, uh, scattering amplitude in gravity to conform a few theory correlation functions. And we have a nice Lorentz symmetry matching. So Lorentz symmetry is agree with this Hong Kong symmetry, which lives on. Uh, Celestial sphere with a uh, co dimension to a uh, spatial region in the original flat space time. But for, for, for those who are working a whole long time about this holography and ADS safety, so usually ADS safety it gives a co dimension one uh, duality relation. On the other hand, celestial holography provides a co dimension two uh, duality. So it's quite interesting to so how. This co dimension two is connected to uh, uh, my standard program, ADS safety like holography, which is co dimension one. So, the natural question which I'd like to ask uh, is uh, why co dimension two appears in this celestial holography. And uh, another question so, if we have some Euclidean CFT, so it's quite natural to ask the basic quantity of conformity, which is one of the basic quantities, central charge, so especially for even dimensional conformity. How the central charge uh, can be uh, computed or how we can estimate from gravity. So I, I will give some idea in this direction. So though this not may, may not be complete answer, but this gives one possibility to understand these issues. And based on more, I, I mean, kind of standard ADS safety like argument using so-called wedge holography. So this is a wedge holography. So we'd like to discuss these questions by using some other, another co-dimension two holography in the context of ADS safety, which is we call wedge holography. This is based on our recent work with Akar, Suki, and Wei. And so let me first give some uh, idea of wedge, wedge holography. So we, we know very much about the ADS safety, which is co-dimension one holography, D plus one dimensional uh, anti-Dosita space gravity is dual to uh, D-dimensional conformal fuel theory lives on the boundary like D dimension, D plus one dimension. And uh, so what we would like to think about uh, some modification about this holograph, wedge holography, it's some co-dimension to the formation of this original ADS CFT. So such is that you can see this picture. So this is just basically ca characterized idea. So the, the same space, let's assume just Poincare ADS, Z is extra dimension, but we put some this uh, two, to see it, to end the world of the brain, two brains. We put some two brains. One brain intersect along some, uh, along, uh, intersect with the boundary. So that means this is co dimension two, actually, in, in total space time. Another, we prepare another end of the world of the brain. 
And those vertebrae mean some, we import some uh, Neumann boundary equation in gravity, and then put this, and then intersect with the same, same place like this. And then, so then chorography, some ADS safety version chorography. So space time is now wedge region in this region. And the boundary is only shrinks to this side, only co-dimension two boundary appears. So it is quite natural that this bulk gravity is dual to this CFT, one dimension, a two dimension lower CFT, CFT D minus one, and bulk dimension D plus one. And such a CFT is dual to, and indeed we can confirm uh, this relationship, at least correlation function, entanglement, entropy, and free energy, and so on. So this is a wedge holography. And, we, and this also turned out to be also co-dimension too. So I, but we'd like to discuss how this is related to a celestial holography, and I'd like to share one idea. And, but here is a summary of wedge holography. So D plus one dimensional classical gravity, which lives on this wedge region, D plus one dimensional region, and this is in the end, you are to D minus one dimensional conformal on this tip of this uh, wedge. And, uh, but uh, we can interpret this co dimension two holography in, as a double holography. So, first we start with this classical gravity in wedge region, and it is dual to end uh, theory lives on the end of the world brain. This end of the world brain has a profile of uh, again anti doshita, D dimensional anti doshita space, but there are some gravity localized because we impose a Neumann boundary condition instead of Dirichlet boundary condition. But on this boundary, we impose Dirichlet boundary condition. So we can apply one more again, so ADS safety. This is the ADS space, and now dual theory is D minus one dimensional safety lives on this tip. So this is a, a heuristic understanding of this co-dimension two holograph. So what I'd like to, uh, this, to, understand, to, to apply this idea to celestial holography, so as in as uh, also similar to other uh, many speakers in this, I think, workshop. And uh, so I'd like to use this Mirunic coordinate. And uh, so we have this Minkowski space, Penrose Minkowski space, and they compose into hyperbolic slice and Dogita space slice. And in hyperbolic slice, we have this metric, so this original Minkowski space metric. And we have, as usual, so we have, a, we call this time coordinate eta, and uh, eta. So constant eta correspond to hyperbolic space, Euclidean hyperbolic space. So we have hyperbolic variation, and uh, there is a, some set uh, co dimension two sphere, so that's still sphere here. And uh, so what we have. Uh, yes. Excuse me, there's a question by Andrew. Yes. I'm sorry, I cannot hear the uh, question. Just a second, yeah. Oh, it does? Okay, good. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Right. Yeah. Is this working? Uh, yeah. Sorry, yes, 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 yeah, I can hear. Hello, Andy. Hi, Tadashi. Um, so, um, ADS, um, ADS 5 cross S5 with Yang Mills is actually co dimension 6, right? And yes, 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 yes. yes. Localized in the internal five dimensions. So is this kind of co-dimension two holography conceptually different from that? I mean, ah, yes, actually, yeah, very close. Yes, indeed. It's a kind of Karazak line compactification, but a uh, uh, new ingredient is the existence of end of the world brain. So it's, a, uh, I mean, not compact manifold, but a man compact as some manifold with boundary. So this is, a, uh, may maybe I should say the difference, but uh, I mean, lovely, very lovely speaking, it is true. So, ADS5 crosses 5 or ADS3 crosses 3. So there we can compactify on this manifold. So then co dimension higher holography appears. I, yes. I, I, is this OK? Would you be eliminating a time like dimension? That that seems yeah, to Yes, yes, that was, yeah, yes, it's in the end, yes. Here, yes. We have to eliminate this time, the time like this. Yes, exactly. That, that's a really tricky point. And then can I ask another question along those lines? Um, so what if instead I had tried to put my, make my end of the world brain basically scry and then have them intersecting at I zero? Like if I just wanted to try to repeat what you're doing, but with like a different choice of. Um... Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think, yeah, that's very, uh, I mean, also, maybe, yeah, I think probably putting this zero sphere here, I, I think we have this wedge and we are localizing the freedom. I think that's, that's a very interesting, also another possibility. Indeed. So, but that somehow it's more complicated. So, I think we focus on this uh, example, but uh, I think it's quite interesting. Cool. 
And then um, I guess oh, I love how it actually like makes sure that I wait till you're done talking. That's perfect for me. Um, so given that, then I guess one interesting question, if one did that would be to see if like gravity is living on that brain, which now is at the boundary, right? Um, okay. So no, um, in the Corollian story. So okay, I'll stop now. I'm sorry. Ah, yeah, but brain is at boundary. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, thank you very much for nice comments. So it's okay to move on. So yeah, so yeah, here uh, so as already on dimension, so we have some time coordinate eta, and this is an extra dimension. And on the other hand, there are some dojita slice, which is like, uh, so it's like a time-like su surface, dojita space, but it's now correlated extra dimension space like this R. And so if we want to apply this wedge holography in this coordinate system, so if we just focus on hy hyperbolic slide, it looks like a wedge. And if we focus on this dojita space, it also looks like a wedge. So that's the motivation why we want to apply this wedge holography here. So, and here, just uh, this, uh, we, we put some artificial cutoff here to regulate calculation, this green boundary. And this is a celestial sphere, and we call this the wedge one. And then wedge one and wedge two is completely different geometry, so different variations. So we somehow we cut it out fast and then fi finally paste it with, with this to each other. But here the point is that so this eta direction, so for fixed eta, we have a hyperbolic slice, and we can naively we can apply ADS3 CFT2. But this is a very exotic situation because uh, it, it, internal coordinate is timeline. There are already one exotic feature here. And on the other hand, wedge two. So this is not, I mean, wedge angle direction is a space light. That is good. But uh, of course, we time slice. Uh, so, so this R, R constant slice is dojita slice. So it's like, it's a, we need to use a, a, a dojita DSCFT as a Trominja. There are many works uh, have DSCFT. But uh, we also know DSCFT, so dual CFT is sort of uh, exotic CFT as opposed to. Um, ADS CFT because uh, if we think just Euclidean CFT dual to something, but usual CFT is dual to hyperbolic space, Euclidean ADS, but uh, the CFT dual to Dojita space is exotic. So in both of these uh, results suggest that probably the dual CFT, which lives on this co-dimension two boundary, is looks like uh, some exotic or maybe non unitary So that's uh, and our, our results somehow uh, also implies this behavior. That's our come back, right? the main, main part of this talk. Okay, so I just finished the introduction and let me first introduce uh, wedge holography in more details and then apply it to uh, celestial holography, free energy calculation, entanglement entropy, and some scalar field cal calculations. So wedge holography, so before that, uh, let me first quickly explain so something which we call uh, ADS BCFT. This means BCFT is boundary conformal theory. That means conformal theory, which on the manifold with boundary. And it's dual to uh, some region of ADS space time. So this is a, a heuristic picture. So we have some manifold M, but with which has a, a obvious boundary, uh, obvious obvious boundary M. And it, this region is dual to some region. So total space is dual to standard uh, ADS space time, but because of the presence of this boundary, it is dual to uh, some region which is surrounded by uh, end of the world brain. So this is called uh, or we call it a EOW brain, but uh, in gravity, so we impose so Neumann boundary condition as we usually do also for brain world setup. And K is a like curvature, and TAB is uh, uh, some localized uh, energy stress, which come from just purely boundary. So if we have some boundary degree freedom, so we can put this. And uh, so the claim is that CFT on a manifold with boundary, partially M, is equivalent to the gravity on the this space time, asymptotically ADS space time, but uh, with uh, end of the world brain. So this is the ADS BCFT correspondence. And we have a, a many, uh, now there's many evidences for that, but uh, for, for, we can choose a simplest uh, example. That is a, a, the case where this boundary energy stress is proportional to the induced metric. And uh, we know, we can, we can see that actually only this choice, we can preserve conformal symmetry, boundary conformal symmetry. So this is a, for BCFT, we want to assume this. Uh, well, so T looks like some boundary cosmological constant, but this is a tension of the brain. And Neumann boundary condition looks like this. 
So K, so if we plug this in here, so it looks like uh, KB is proportional to HAB, and its value is given by this, and gravity action, and then, so gravity action totally looks like this, is einstein hilbert action, and also given the hooking time and tension time, and we just plug this, and this, we just evaluate with this part. Um, geometry, then we get the free energy. So the explicit example, so most basic example of ADSB shift is like this. So, so here, we, it is convenient. So we, we have this uh, Poincare ADS, but it is much more convenient to use some hyperbolic slice coordinate. This is hyperbolic slice coordinate, which is cos rho square. Rho is a radial direction, this rho direction. And Z is extra dimension. This is a normal uh, Poincare uh, upper half plane, but this is we created this hyperbolic slice. So rho goes to minus infinity, is a half of the boundary, but it's as the row evolves, it goes like, into the bulk, but it ends at the row equal row star. And if we go to row, row to infinity, it covers all Poincare upper frame, but uh, we terminate row at row equal row star. So we have this it's only wedge region. And so, and row star is related to, so if we impose this uh, boundary condition relation, so this is row star is related to the tension of the brain. So if large tension is like go, go up to uh, very close to the boundary, but for small tension, t equals zero, it's like oh, uh, also gonna like this choice. Um, yeah, so this is a, a basic setup. So the, I mean, obviously solvable setup of any specialty. And so, but the two e e examine, so, the degree of freedom, one way to uh, see degree of freedom is to look at the entanglement entropy, because roughly speaking, this also measures the degree of freedom and also depends on the choice of the subsystem. And it's, uh, we can have a, we can use this as some measure of this uh, degree of freedom. So we have subsystem A uh, here, and uh, we have boundary here, and we decompose A and B uh, along some surface. And we, we can define entanglement entropy by the reduced tension matrix for which one we trace out B and we evaluate this von Neumann entropy for this reduced tension matrix. And then we, we define SA, which is the entanglement entropy. And we can calculate it as a, a area of extrema surface here, and which covers region A. So we, yeah, so we can use this. And uh, so, but I, in this context of this ADSB CFT, because we have, a, End of the world brain. This is a new ingredient. So we have to uh, use uh, generalization of this formulation. This is a, a holographic entanglement entropy being ADSB shift setup. Formula looks same, but new thing is something B appears. B also recently calls uh, in the context of a black hole information paradox, it's called iron. As essentially, I mean, very, uh, essentially the same thing. If we think about this ADSB shift in terms of brain world holography and like gravity interpretation. So, um, so we have some uh, this wedge like region in ADS, ADS space time, but here it's just standard asymptotical ADS boundary. So, where we have M, we have a uh, B shifty boundary conformal field theory lives here, and we put some uh, re subsystem A here, and we want to calculate the entanglement entropy. But because of the presence of boundary, so it's gravity dual, have end words world brain here, and if we calculate the entanglement entropy, so this there's a minimal surface which covers A, but not only that, we can think of, we can think about the possibility that this minimal surface, extremal surface, end on the uh, on this end of the world brain. So it can end here. You can imagine like, like because of putting some extra one as a mirror method to calculate correlation function, we usually put mirror, charged mirror. And then you can imagine, roughly speaking, it goes to the other side, and this is quite sounds maybe quite natural. And but we can also justify from uh, the uh, calculation of entanglement entropy. And anyway, so so it can end on the boundary. So uh, <laughs> so and so now we come to the wedge holography in the context of ADS and the setup of wedge holography. It's like this hyperbolic patch like this. But the point is that we have some end of the world brain is surrounded this region. And uh, so we have a low direction as before. And uh, we assume some low equal minus low star here and low equal low star here, and it's surrounded. And uh, yeah, so we pick up this low star and low star, uh, low star is finite. 
then dual theory is lives on this green region. If we even if we put some cutoff, this is the, and in, if we take cutoff goes to zero, then it really shrinks to zero size. So that's the actual reason why we have a boundary is uh, co-dimension two. So we expect this theory is dual to this. I mean, gravity theory on this wedge is dual to this green region. Some CFT lives on, that means CFT d minus one. So d plus one dimensional wedge region is dual to d minus one, and so we can. Uh, this is a uh, Poincaré coordinate, but we can use this uh, this hyperbolic variation. And so we can also understand this holography, holography as a limit of ADS B shift. So we have like the end of the bottom line. You can to, to, you can think about gravity dual of strip strip region finite regions, and then it this uh, gravity dual looks like this shaded region. This is a ADS boundary, and this is a, a z direction extra dimension. And that we take a limit so that this width is goes to zero. So then originally d dimensional strip at now looks like d minus one dimensional line. So local. So that this is the origin of also CFT d minus one. So ADSB shift and the wedge holography is closely related because of this relation. And so now next thing is to evaluate entanglement entropy in this wedge holography. So this is actually something new happens because. Uh, we have end of the world brain, two end of the world brain. So actually, so this is actually can be done by two minimi double minimization. So we start with some of the subsystem A here, and we are interested in entanglement entropy for region A. So then first thing to do is to extend one dimension higher. So extend this uh, boundary, boundary of A to one dimension higher, which is we write it gamma A in small character, lower case. So you, you can have this. And we can extend it. So there are infinitely many different ways to extension, but let's just fix one of them. And once we fix this boundary, so then we can think about minimal surface which covers this total boundary. It's gamma one and gamma two. And this is uniquely fixed. And so this is a, this minimization. And then later we change this shape of this gamma, this gamma a. So this uh, co dimension one at the d minus one dimensional boundary. And this is a second minimization. And that way, so we can. That even though we, we are co-dimensional to situation, but we can do double minimization to pick up this correct minimal surface. And this is quite naturally derived from this prescription, which I mentioned in ADSB shift. So this is a wedge holography in double entropy. So now I'd like to come back to flat space holography. So how, if we apply these rules to flat space celestial holography, what kind of result we can get? And so free, let's, uh, let us try to evaluate free energy. So we, we just start with this action. So we have a two boundary. So we now decompose this uh, hyperbolic patch and the dojita patch. So we have, we pick up these two uh, separate calculation. We do separate calculation, finally, some of this. Or even separately, I think it's quite interesting. So we can think this is a kind of new kind of holography. So it's really surrounded by this region with Neumann boundary condition. And we just talk about gravity dual of this region, and which is uh, dual to claim to be dual to this uh, co-dimension to celestial sphere. Let, 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 it's local let, let point. And also same thing for Deutsche space is like, it's, uh, sorry, this red part is actually going here. So this is not, not correct. So the red point should be here. The celestial sphere should be here. And uh, so we can evaluate free energy. So we know this geometry, and we know the value of tension for these brains uh, to solve this boundary equation. So let me uh, think about it. And then, so the, here is a, uh, I mean, expression. So the omega is the volume of the sphere, and it's just integral of this really low, low direction is like this. Can I ask and, this short thing? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, what do you mean by the holographic dual of that region? We we understand how to make such statements in ADS, but what does it mean to what part? This is the uh, yeah. This is in a celestial conformal field theory, or you think of something more general? Ah, uh, so you yeah. So if we just separate to take one of this, so uh, I mean. So, so you have in mind, for example, we can think about this hyperbolic slice and only pick up this region and think about this gravity dual. Then I think yeah, property is very similar to celestial holography because if we add these two, 
uh, gives uh, selectiocloroquine. And uh, we can actually see that these two, uh, even though we, we have two possibilities, hyperbolic slice and dojita slice, but uh, both seem to give very similar results, as uh, I'll explain. So I think it's a very similar class of celestial uh, CFT, I think. Well, the maps between um, bulk states and boundary states are very different. So in celestial holography, you might naturally have states at the North Pole of the sphere and states at the South Pole, right? There's, you can't talk about a state on the sphere. Um, and, you know, you could have something more complicated like, uh, I, I mean, I don't know what the answer is, but you know, you could look at this, for example, like the black hole diagram where you have two, um, you know, the, the part inside the black hole, the wedge one looks like the part inside the black hole and maybe it's the entanglement of the two conformal field theories. I, I just don't know what's being assumed. Ah, I see. Uh, yeah, so yeah, if we have non-trivial geometry like Schwarzschild, we have a double copy, I think, of this and the, yeah, it may be naively we think these two states are entangled, left part and right part, but uh, it's a defined on sphere. So it is true. So because it's defined on sphere, not the same that it's not so easy to uh, think of a state itself. Yeah. Because we have to anyway cut out uh, and region to define. So we decompose sphere into two parts, a uh, uh, disk and disk, upper disk and lower disk. And we can formally, we can define state here, but uh, it's so different from usual ADS safety in that sense. Yeah. Usually we can think about some cylinder and the cylinder is, we have two cylinder as a boundary for eternal ADS3 and they are entangled. So that is easy to understand, but here it's a sphere, so. Yeah, so when you say the holographic dual of that region, ah, yeah, so well, I mean just partition function. So sphere partition function on some CFT is equal to uh, gravity partition function. The sphere partition function. Yes, yes, yes. Why would the sphere partition function just describe that? That's that's the Milne universe you're talking about there, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, sphere partition function, but but I, I mean, yeah. So you can put some operator to calculate the correlation function also, and if we can think about some many part of it, many sources. So it's a lot, has a lot of information. Also, entanglement entropy also corresponds to some kind of seeing some kind of uh, uh, reaction when we introduce some deficit angle on the sphere. Okay, well, what are we entangling? Where ah, the yeah, so yeah, okay. So here in, in this, so we had in mind some generalization of that. So, uh, but it appears in the calculation replica method. So anyway, we have some sphere and the idea is of entanglement, just putting some subsystem A here and introduce this cut here, and uh, we, we use a replica method to calculate the entanglement entropy. So this is uh, our definition of entanglement entropy. But in principle, we can do some conformal map to just uh, frame, then it's like looks like this, and it looks like standard entanglement entropy, and we can define state here. Yeah, is, is this clear? Uh, no. Uh, for example, it, on that picture in the lower right, that's the that would be a causal diamond. Of, yes, yes, yes. That would be a causal diamond of the sitter space, and in, and I guess there you would be talking about DSCFT, and so you could ask, what what object or if we have a state in the causal diamond, perhaps that would be dual to a state either in the CFT dual to the sitter space or it's double, uh, I don't know what the answer is. Uh, okay, so I, I didn't think that way. So I'm just thinking this dual 2D CFT, 2D, uh, 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 sorry, let's get this DS3. Then we have a 2D CFT. And I'm just thinking about 2D CFT on sphere. And the 2D CFT, so we can introduce state and so on. But I, uh, I'm not so here. We're also asking so what this to the safety state is dual to some state in gravity. That part uh, we don't have a clear understanding. But we we don't have a. Do we have an understanding of? So uh, 
the two, if this is DS3 and we have a 2D CFT, the states live on circles. And um, if you have a circle in, uh, that lives on the boundary of DS3, a circle in scry, that's the boundary of a space-like surface that ends in scry, that, that ends on that circle. And it would be natural to presume that that state is dual to the bulk state uh, whose boundary it forms. The CFT state on the circle in scry would be naturally presumed to be dual to uh, a state on the bulk slice that ends on that circle. But uh, that, I see, I see, I see, I see. That bulk uh, is not confined to the diamond that you've, it crosses the diamond. I, I'm not sure what I said is right. I see, I see. But uh, uh, I, I see, yeah. Mm. It is clearly right. I see, I see. So, sorry, but yeah, so I, I don't have any I mean, good idea for, for this, to be honest. So what what I had in mind is like just, I mean, duality between gravity partition function and CFT partition function. And uh, so, yeah, so I mean, what the uh, I mean, dual state of CFT state in, inside area space is not so, uh, in area space, uh, digital space is not so clear. I, I, sorry, sorry, I, I should say that way. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting question. I, I think it's very sad, I mean, interesting suggestion, but uh, so it's, I cannot have a definite answer to that. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you very much. So, I, sorry, just, okay. So, yeah, so anyway, after that, we just evaluate this quantity. So just using this calculation, so we find, so D equal three, this is dual to CFT two, CFT two, and this is a D equal five with CFT four. We are interested in even dimensional conformal field theory because we can define central charge. And uh, so as we know, so it's logarithmic term, coefficient of logarithmic term is gives a uh, central charge. So this is the central charge, but we put we need to put I here because uh, CFT action is dual to gravity action and gravity action has I because it's a low range space time. So, if we do it honestly, so we have this result. So this result, this is a central charge of to the uh, dual CFT. But eta two square and eta two is this uh, uh, location of this brain and the eta one is the location of this brain. And uh, for D, but the form it looks precisely the same as CFT. What we expect for CFT and D equal five case, we have also similar situations like it is, so it starts from quadratic and quadratic. This is also what we expect for CFT for the CFT and end up with some logarithmic term. And from here, we can evaluate the central charge. Uh, so again, we, we need to put that here to, to have this uh, 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 low range charge signature. This is also similar to uh, the CFT uh, in even dimensional CFT. And uh, so we can do the same thing for Dogita patch. So yeah, so basically, again, we have some logarithmic piece and we can read off central charge and also we can read off for central charge for 4D CFT, this 2D CFT and 4D CFT. Okay, so, and then we go to uh, entanglement entropy. So this gives some consistency check whether we can get same central charge from entanglement entropy calculation. So we, here we use this uh, calculation of entanglement entropy. Um, so here we have used uh, the previous prescription of co-dimension two holography. So, so here it's like, uh, this is a diamond. So this is a, a hyperbolic slice diamond. So hyperbolic slice look, looks like this, looks like this. But here we, uh, this is subsystem A here. So uh, minimal surface is, looks like this gamma A, but uh, if we change the uh, slice, it's go this way and this way and so on. It's connected, in the end it's connected. So this is a, uh, and we have to integrate all this surface and that gives our area. We just evaluate this area, this area. And we can do the same thing. Dojita space is a bit complicated because it's go to the other side of the uh, Dojita boundary. But uh, maybe we can cut off by putting some Euclidean sphere. This is a hard to in prescription or you can go go to the uh, other part. Uh, it's go to the antipodal point. But both give the a, a, a same result. Only factor two is different because this is a, for Euclidean case, we have this region, but the, a full logic that gives a both of the region. And the result looks like this. Again, agree with what we expect from C, a CFT. So this is a CFT 
it looks like CFT, this is usual normal result for entanglement entropy in CFT on the final sphere. This is a well-known result, and the central chart looks like this one, and uh, we can read off that, and this precisely agree with the previous one, which we read off, we found, we find from free energy calculation, and we can do this, this is CFT2, dual to CFT2, and this is, a, ah, sorry, and this is CFT4. CFT4 case, we can do the same thing again, and this logarithmic term, we can read off this logarithmic coefficient, this logarithmic divergence, we can read off central chart from this. And basically, also again, we find exactly the same result as gravity, uh, free energy calculation. Okay, so, and the, yeah, so, yeah, had the cycle of slice. And then we can do the same thing for Toshita space. And again, we have the same results like this. And so, maybe, yeah, so then we want to, I will rethink, so hyperbolic wedge plus uh, Dogita wedge. If we test this with each other and taking this limit, eta one goes to zero and r one goes to zero, we recover for uh, space time, a full uh, flat space region. So maybe this is related to celestial holography. So if we assume that we can evaluate central charge. So maybe a little bit interesting thing happens for depending on the dimension. So D equals three case, somehow, so to the CFT case, we have some, this plus sign. So it's, uh, it looks like I, uh, if we, Take the seriously, so it's the central charge goes to i times infinity. So I think Pastorsky, uh, also, uh, also uh, leads the same conclusion. And then for this CFT, but there are some minus sign here. So if we fine tune this divergence, data infinity, and it's a cut of here and cut of here, the R infinity the same, then it's actually, actually we can cancel it and to get the zero central charge. So yeah, maybe this is an interesting suggestion. Okay, so and then finally, I would like to uh, think about this bulk scale, propagation bulk scalar here. So this is a so we can solve this bulk equation equations in many of the, as, I think very similar. So similar equation already appeared in many many I think talks and many many papers in this. So this is quite well known result. So we can decompose. Uh, so we use this for example this hyperbolic slice. Then we can decompose solution in terms of spherical harmonics and like. A, Lujander function and also Bessel function in eta direction, rho direction and eta direction. And the Dochita slice also we can do the same similar thing. Sorry. So we can do the same thing. Dochita slice, we can do the same thing and using similar function, but we obtained by some analytical continuation from here. And so, and we can evaluate this. So, uh, we can evaluate two-point function, just assuming, for example, this, uh, if we can just li limit to this holography to this region, without forgetting about Dogita slice, we can just confine to a uh, hyperbolic uh, slice and with some finite value of this eta, then it uh, gives some new kind of holography and we can evaluate two-point function in that region uh, using the standard bulk to boundary relation, which is very common in ASCFT. And uh, but anyway, so we find this uh, bulk solution. It looks like this. Uh, this solution is, corresponds to the case where we put some source on this two-dimensional two source, two-dimensional sphere. So this, uh, if we put source, then some it's back reaction appears. And this back reaction part, so we usually think this source, and this is called the extension value of operator. And this part precisely gives two-point function. This is quite usual in area safety. And here also, uh, exactly the same thing. And also, this is same as a uh, uh, much earlier argument of this uh, celestial holography. So we can do this calculation, and we can read of conformal dimension. So it's an angle between, between these two points. And I, so use the normal, uh, so common uh, notation, and the P, we introduce P as a, this parameter here. P is an orbitary parameter, and here, so and we conformal dimension in celestial CFT on celestial sphere is delta. And it's new is defined by one plus p squared root root of that. So one nice thing okay. that you're getting. Uh, I'm sorry. Any question? Yeah, one nice thing you're getting here is whatever derivation you're doing is somehow getting for us like what we want to be like this shadow um, term for the two point function. So it would be interesting to trace back through how um, like there's nothing asymmetric about what you're saying is in and out state or any like label on the particle, but you're getting the normal nice two point function. So. <laughs> 
I just wanted to point out that that's something that's a little bit um, subtle to try to do directly from like the amplitudes. So it's nice. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I see. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. But here we impose a Neumann boundary condition in the actual future and the past. So the calculation is very similar to standard area safety. But uh, if we think about ingoing and outgoing waves, I think, it, as you say, it's really a little bit different in that sense. Yes. Thank you very much. So, yeah. Yeah. So actually, that's that's a difference. I I will actually finally I commented, but uh, anyway, so we can think of we can solve this uh, solution with uh, we can try to solve this equation with this boundary condition and in uh, you know, this eta one eta two, and then we find actually the spectrum is quantized. So this p is uh, discretized, and we find that all solution in hyperbolic space is uh, like this infinite many discrete solution, but always new takes imaginary. That means uh, conformal dimension is uh, complex value. And if we think also do dojita splice, it's there are some real value, so, uh, again value, and only finite number, but uh, if it remains, again, so imaginary uh, solution, and that means we have, uh, again, this is takes uh, a complex value. It looks like, I mean, complex value, conformal dimension, that means looks like, you know, no unitary safety. And so yeah, if we want to real, and here we impose this end of the length, which is really Neumann boundary condition, so there are no uh, waves pass through that. So that, but if we want to relate this really uh, celestial holography, which relates this very nice relationship between uh, scattering amplitude and correlation function as worked out past Ruski, Shao, Strom, Ninja. So and in this beautiful form, reason, so it's, we have some plus min minus, and it's like incoming and outgoing. And we can compare this with ours, this uh, uh, this wedge holography type, uh, normal wedge holography we, we, we impose Neumann boundary equations. There are, actually, wedge one case, it looks be similar because, uh, so if we write this uh, wave function in terms of this Bessel function and this our coordinate, so it's like, okay, this is the same thing for this wedge one, but wedge two, because uh, waves are coming in and coming out, it's boundary conditions different. So in celestial holography, we, uh, we need to impose uh, incoming and outgoing boundary condition, but in uh, which holography we have to impose, usually we impose Dirichlet and Neumann boundary condition. I don't see a plus or minus on the right-hand side. Where is the in and out? Uh, uh, yeah, so here, uh, uh, so this uh, the Bessel function has a, uh, I mean, two 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 different Bessel function, Hankin function. So it's a uh, one is incoming and one is outgoing. Yeah, but in our case, we don't use Hunter function, but we instead we use the usual basic function. So that, that's actually a difference. And yeah, thank you very much. And yeah, so basically that's all of my talk. And let me uh, summarize. So we studied operation holography in deep plus one dimensional flat space time for hyperbolic slice wedge and dojita slice wedge. Actually, we uh, mainly studied this setup. So this separately. So this one. This one and this one, we can just propose that actually this this two uh, gives some new holographic relation, co-dimension two holographic relation, and uh, a priori it's not directly related to uh, celestial holography, but it uh, seems to be have a very similar property about central channel and so on. But uh, once we paste this two, if we boundary is extend to eta equal zero and r equal zero, and we can paste this together, then its region looks very similar to celestial holography, and maybe. This is our result for free energy and the uh, central charge might be also uh, can be applied to this celestial holography. But uh, at the same time, uh, uh, so we, we also, in this calculation, we find this conformal dimension of the other operator's complex value and also uh, central charge also looks like imaginary. But uh, of course, there are some one difference that as finally I mentioned, so boundary constraints is different. So maybe to really uh, relate this uh, wedge holography to uh, celestial holography, maybe we need to modify. And uh, so we, we need to think about modification boundary condition of which holography. So which is, uh, I mean, future problem, one of future problem, but also we want to understand the uh, uh, nature of this non unitary CFTs and uh, what about merge point functions and uh, as also and dimensions. So what about the, uh, this short shield, like I mean, eternal black hole, we have two boundaries. So maybe two spheres are entangled or we, we, at, at present we have nothing to say, but it's quite interesting 
problem. And finally, it's, it's really great to understand this emergent time because it's uh, time direction is here. It's like really extra dimension, which we sh should, which should be, a, uh, which, which will be some emerges from, uh, from this CFT. So thank you very much. I think I will stop here. Ah, sorry, can you hear me? Are there any questions? Um, okay, well, if not, let's thank Tadashi again. Thank you very much.